Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Aretha Lafayette, Program Manager for Research Education Program Development and Outreach in the Office of Research and Innovation. I'm your session MC for today's discussion. Before we begin this program, we would like to make a land acknowledgement. UT Dallas stands on land originally settled and occupied by the Caddo, Wichita, and Comanche people. We recognize the legacy of colonization and the harm caused by the forced removal of indigenous people from these lands. UT Dallas continues to benefit from the contributions of indigenous students and employees on our campus, and we are committed to ongoing support for the native culture that is essential to our community. For more information on the history of the land UT Dallas occupies, the Caddo Confederacy, and relevant treaties, please visit the Multicultural Center website. Joining me to serve as the moderator for this session is Dr. Nikki Delk. Dr. Delk is a tenured associate professor, professor in biological sciences and endowed Cecil H. and Ida Green professor in systems biology science and the assistant VP for research development in the Office of Research and Innovation at the University of Texas at Dallas. Her research lab studies inflammation-induced cancer progression and treatment resist and treatment resistance and is supported by funding from UT Dallas, the National Cancer Institute, and the American Cancer Society. Due to her impact in the field and scholarly activities, Dr. Delk was named on the 2020 Cell Press list of 1,000 inspiring Black scientists in America and inducted into the Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society in 2022. After receiving her bachelor's in math from Georgetown University, Dr. Delk was commissioned as an Air Force officer where she served four years before obtaining her doctorate in molecular biology from Rice University. She obtained a doctorate in order to pursue her childhood dream of being a cancer biologist in honor of her grandmother who passed from cancer. She was a postdoctoral fellow at MD Anderson Cancer Center and a postdoctoral and faculty fellow at Rice University before joining the faculty at UT Dallas in 2014. Dr. Delk, you have the floor. Thank you, Aretha. And I'm uh, excited and honored to be able to host today. I want to tell you about our panelists that we'll have for the webinar. So Chris Bahat Body is Assistant Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations and Associate Dean at the University of Texas at Dallas, leading major and principal gifts for the university. Before taking on this role, he served as the Assistant Dean for Development and Alumni Relations at the Johnson School of Engineering and Computer Science. Chris still serves the Johnson School as Associate Dean and leads the Office of External Relations which includes development, alumni relations, corporate relations, and partnerships. In his role as adjunct faculty member at UT Dallas, Chris teaches the Institute for Innovation in the Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Jindal School of Management. As an alumna from UT Dallas, Chris serves on the Diversity Ad Advisory Council, furthering the efforts of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And then our second panelist is Dr. Walter Akers. Dr. Walker, Walter Akers strives to combine his education and experience as a veterinary and biological imaging scientist to combat cancer and other diseases through developing novel preclinical and translational molecular imaging approaches and improve our ability to diagnose, stage, and treat cancer and other highly destructive diseases. Utilizing his expertise in animal physiology and biomedical Im imaging, he has developed innovative techniques to study pharmacological profiles and tumor selective contrast enhancement achieved with small molecules and nanoparticle based agents. So welcome to our panelists. I'm gonna start with our first question, open to both panelists. Are only the topics listed in the solicitation allowed or can other topics be proposed? So I'll open this up to um, Dr. Akers, please. Hi, good morning, thank you. Absolutely, it's open to other uh, topics. The goal of this 
fund. Uh, this award is to fund translational and commercializable uh, research. So if it falls within that realm, then it's acceptable. So for clarification, it is not limited to biomedical engineering. That is correct. This has not been limited to biomedical engineering. And Chris, I guess you don't, do you have anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so good morning, everyone. It's it's so exciting to be here talking with you all about the Light Hill Innovation Fund. It's been truly, you know, years in the making of having discussions with this and with the with the donor uh, to create such a fund. So we're very, very excited that we're finally at the point where we're kicking it off and, you know, seeing um, how we can allocate the funds. Um, in alignment with the donor's intent and wishes. And so, you know, when with having, you know, um, uh, conversations with uh, Light of Health Philanthropies and, 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 and their group, really at the end of the day, you know, the intent of the donor is to fund groundbreaking research that will have the highest impact for patients. So anything that, that, that falls in that um, category from a topic perspective um, is, 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 is fair game, right? So everything from, Big data analyses, right? Using you know um, um, computer science and AI in terms of looking at ML for, to solve some of the you know some of the issues and and um, that we see in healthcare is is an example of you know not necessarily being directly in biomedical engineering, but related to furthering the efforts that um, can have an impact on healthcare or or or, or uh, patients. In addition, you know, one of the things that they, uh, they, you know, I've heard many, many times um, uh, from the conversations with the donor is, you know, what are the projects that are, or topics, I should say, that are going to have the highest likelihood for, to get from the lab to the patient, right? And so, you know, going from the lab to the patient, there's many, many steps from a commercialization piece, from a research piece, from a funding piece as well. Um, and so those are the topics that uh, they're very interested in and seeing um, uh, 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 fun, fun to fund um, because that's really where, uh, just like how Dr. Akers mentioned, you know, the highest likelihood for commercialization is 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 well, what's right in alignment with this fund. So, oh, so in the, in line with that or, or piggybacking on that, um, Dr. Akers. So with the projects, are you really looking for projects that are more translational or would you also expect projects that are more on the basic research side? The purpose of this award is particularly for translational research and those uh, devices, techniques, uh, research that is close to the point of commercialization. This is a 12 month period that is going to be funded and it's competitive in the nature for just these two awards and that part of that competition is really is this technology is this research close enough to commercialization that it needs this support uh, to get over the hump to be ready for uh, additional funding through um, SBIRs, STTRs, sorry that's getting into the next question but uh, or uh, venture capital funding is that close to commercialization that it needs the support to get through this next year of uh, development in order to be translated and to help people? Because as we all know, uh, the research that we do, uh, basic research into this translational part where, yes, biomedical engineering is uh, often seen as that bridge between basic research and uh, clinical applications in order to be effective it really does need to go through the commercialization process to be um, to be commercialized and uh, spread to the, the the market and used in healthcare. Um, and then we also want to uh, emphasize as well as that this um, funding opportunity is a collaboration with UT Southwestern and with UT Dallas. So uh, you need a uh, one co PI needs to be um, from UT. Southwestern, the other co-PI would be from UT Dallas. And, and leading into speaking of, of SBIRs and STTRs, so you are anticipating, Dr. Akers, you are anticipating that awardees would be submitting, submitting an SBIR, STTR. A big component of this application is the commercialization plan. And often along with IP safeguarding through patenting, 
uh, a plan for how to fund the commercialization process is going to be important. And that research from uh, the translational side to commercialization in the academic environment often includes an SBIR or STTR plan or funding through that process for initial funding as well as commercialization. So I think that it's a reasonable approach to extend beyond this, this year of funding because this is only one year as to plan within that to have that kind of funding application in this year. So with that being said, during that year period that you have the funding, is the expectation that the team would already be setting up, already have an RFA in mind for an, for an SBIR, maybe, because I believe SBIRs in, include companies as well, I believe. Is, does that also include in, um, interactions with companies? Yes, yes, often. The, uh, there is a, either a startup company planned, and that's going to be part of the commercialization process as well, is how is this going to be scaled up? How is this going to be taken to market? And often that commercialization process requires a company, either a startup company from the labs that are uh, initializing this research or working with another company uh, to, to make that happen. And I do, again, want to comment on your, uh, your uh, recognition that this is a collaborative process as far as this fund is for collaboration between at least one UT Dallas faculty and UT, one UT Southwestern faculty. It is not limited to biomedical engineering, but it does uh, go along with our continued partnership that is um, leading toward the, uh, the building of this new Texas Instruments Biomedical Engineering Sciences building that is on the UT Southwestern campus, but is an equal partnership between UT Southwestern and UT Dallas and uh, our inaugural, our new uh, biomedical engineering uh, department here at UT Southwestern uh, will occupy half of that new building. Thank you. Okay, so next question, um, and this is open to uh, Chris and Dr. Akers. Uh, are there expectations re related to return on investment of the funding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'll take that one first. Um, and so, you know, you know, to understand that question, you know, I, I think it's it's important to understand, um, um, you know, Lida Hill and and, and Lida Hill philanthropies. Um, you know, just a little background of 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 Lida Hill. You know, they they are the um, well, Lida is an, an incredibly generous philanthropist uh, here in the Dallas Fort Worth metroplex, and even though she gives uh, across the nation. Um, and she's been very, very generous to UT Dallas and to UT Southwestern um, uh, historically. Uh, so the joint building um, that many of you all see being constructed right now between UT Dallas and, and, and UT Southwestern, the Texas Instruments Biomedical Engineering and Sciences building, um, was also generously funded by um, Lida Health Philanthropies. And so they had a hand in funding the actual capital uh, for the building, which we're very, very thankful for their generosity. So in addition to that, one of the things that that Lida has been very, very big on is um, that philanthropy can be done at scale if organizations were to combine their collective efforts. So going back to that joint co-PI between UT Dallas and UT Southwestern, that's one of the big um, drivers behind her philanthropy is this that we are better together. Right. Actually, she was the uh, funder behind a fund here in Dallas called the Better Together Fund, which was philanthropic dollars that was all aimed to have nonprofits work collaboratively and collectively together to further the impact that those nonprofits so so dearly care for. Right. And so that's part of the impetus behind why the joint co-PI um, uh, model here between UT Dallas and UC, UT Southwestern. So that's one of the big, I think uh, Dr. Akers and Dr. Delk already mentioned it, but understanding why um that's part of this proposal is really really important she 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 dearly loves ut southwestern and it and also ut dallas and so seeing two organizations that she um uh, cares for working together to further right you know so if you sit and talk with her you know you'll you'll she'll she'll, she'll mention that you know many of 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 what she believes solutions in society uh can come from scientific discovery. And so that's a big uh, uh, expectation in terms of, you know, really funding uh, two projects, you know, $120,000 per project um, that can lead to a company that could then be in a position to either attract 
um, investors or venture capital funding and whatnot. It's part of the discussion that we had with them when we were envisioning these funds and this uh, this fund being uh, coming to fruition was, you know, how do we attract, um, you know, the 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 the, the venture capital kind of uh, approach. How do we be in Dallas, Fort Worth, North Texas, really be that hub for biotech uh, and a leader in biotech in, in 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 the nation, right? And how do you do that? How do you compete with the Silicon Valley? Well, it's having the the amazing innovation here that you all are doing in the in the classrooms and in the labs that can then be commercialized. So that's really one of the expectations is to first and foremost. Uh, uh, work together between UT Dallas and UT Southwestern. Secondly, to really be in a place where um, the idea can then translate to a commercializable idea that can attract venture capital funding or private equity or investors as well. I know UT Southwestern has had a number of companies that have gone on to, to do that, um, as has UT Dallas. Um, and so creating a scale for that, that can then drive um, uh, competitiveness to the North Texas region as it relates to venture capital and investing and all the rest, right? And so that's one of the things, you know, one of the things is is that sh she believes that, you know, um, you know, this idea between philanthropy and 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 business is is a is a powerful force, right? So this idea of how do you scale and, and commercialize um, something that she is philanthropically funding is right in alignment with. Um, uh, uh, her wishes, right? The the donor's wishes. And then also, you know, really, I'll say a third expectation is really having, um, you know, milestones in progress. This is the initial, the seed to the Lada Hill Innovation Fund, um, you know, and so these two projects are really going to set the standard on future funding um, from uh, Lada Hill Philanthropy. So really, this is the seed, seed stage. And then as we you know, show progress with these two um, projects that are ultimately selected. That's then going to um, uh, determine, you know, you know, uh, future funding from this donor based on the progress that these two projects make. And so that's um, one of the other things. And then, you know, uh, last but not least, in terms of expectations, going back to that thesis, right? You know, um, you know, Lida Hill is is the, the 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 capital as well as the the brains behind the Pegasus Park. Um, and so, you know, as as it relates to you know expectations, right? You know, they 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 do see Pegasus Park as a huge resource, and I know that's getting into our next uh, um, uh, uh, question about other resources, but a huge resource for companies that are looking to spin out or be commercialized, and so um, that's something to consider as well. Thank you, Dr. Akers. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add regarding expectations? For the funding? I believe that was a perfect summary. Uh, <laughs> this is research. This is a, an award for research. And while there are no uh, demands that this is absolutely going to uh, have a product that is going to return money to the either the, the philanthropy or uh, the institutions overall, I know that this will be uh, judged as far as the applications on the potential for translation and commercialization. So that's the expectation is that these hopefully will lead to startup companies or uh, commercializable products that will then foster the uh, innovation hub and biotech hub that we, we all hope to develop together here in the Dallas Metroplex. So with that being said, Dr. Akers, how will commercialization be handled since it is joint? between UT Southwestern and UT Dallas. Thank you. Well, while this is a new award, uh, UT Dallas and UT Southwestern faculty have collaborated on multiple projects over many years before this. And so the commercialization will be handled in the same way as uh, other uh, funded projects or collaborative projects. And that it needs to be established uh, how this is going to work between the faculty members who are collaborating and have an agreement and part of that commercialization uh, plan that they have will be this uh, the patenting the IP protection uh, who is going to how it's going to be split and how that's going to work with startup companies that are going to be developed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, commercialization process uh, needs to be decided up front and early on and I think that that should be part of this application. Chris, do you have anything? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Actually, we'll no. be, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll just, you know, I think, um, you know, uh, Dr. Aker said it um, said it best. So, you know, I, I don't have really too much uh, uh, to, to add other than, you know, like Dr. Aker said, you know, we have been working collaboratively, commercializing um, uh, ideas between UTD and UT Southwestern. That's that's been pretty common. And then, you know, as 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 our offices continue to to work together, I mean, I, th I think we have a. Uh, um, a context for working together, that idea of collaboration. I mean, even establishing this gift was done in a true joint um, collaborative manner between UT Dallas and UT Southwestern between our offices of development. And so as we look to commercialize and work together on 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 the actual uh, the projects that are going to consume this funding, I think, uh, you know, Dr. Aker said it best. So. Thank you. And so um, with that being said, uh, are there going to be resources to help with the commercialization process since that is one of the expected return on investments from this funding? Mm -hmm. Sure, I, 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 Dr. Aikens, why don't you go first? And then okay. I can fill in. Absolutely. I know that both institutions have programs to support startup companies and, and commercialization process. The UT Southwestern Office of Technology and Development does have uh, both the, the training for entrepreneurship for faculty, as well as assistance for commercialization as, as the process goes along, whether that is, uh, you know, the, the dolphin tank that we have here that is similar to Shark Tank and, mm -hmm. and pitching ideas and finding uh, investors to support it, or the, uh, the, the Think, um, the uh, i -Corps and the, the ThinkPad training processes that are here. So we have a lot of, uh, resources here at UT Southwestern, as um, I know that you, Chris will mention about UTD, uh, mm -hmm. that are supportive of entrep entrepreneurship and uh, uh, commercialization. So those those resources are here. They're easy to access. Um, Kara Forsberg in the Office of Technology and Development is um, heading up some of those, uh, but the, the um, uh, there are many resources available and that uh, commercialization process should consider any of these uh, within the within the application should be considered and if there are any resources that are needed that faculty are not aware of they can reach out to uh, you know here at UT Southwestern the Office of Technology and Development um, or you know we can help in the department as well uh, through the the collaborations that are being developed. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Akers. And I'll just speak on behalf of, of UT Dallas. And, um, you know, first and foremost, we, we, we do have a Blackstone launch, but as, the, as does um, uh, UT Southwestern as well. Um, you know, in the past, I've seen a number of faculty members and staff members utilize the resources there because it is open not only to students, but to faculty and staff and, and students and alum. Um, that are interested in commercializing an idea. And so, you know, in the past, I've, I've, I've heard great things about um, from other faculty members who are looking to commercialize their ideas through resources at the Blackstone Launchpad. And that's through our, um, our, our, our cent the center, the Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, uh, which falls under our Office of Research uh, here at UT Dallas and uh, the academic programs through the School of Management. I'll say also, you know, there there is a training. I know that this uh, um, uh, award, or excuse me, the, yeah, the Light Hill Innovation Fund, I should say, um, the awardees will is open to more than just bioengineering. Um, however, the bioengineering department does have a bioengineering startup training. It's an eight week session that goes into the intricacies. Um, it's it's bioengineering startup training, but you know it, it really the training is it, it can be applicable to multiple um, disciplines. And so you know from you know filing your patent to you know how do you go out and you know create a pitch deck and then pitch an idea uh, for you know, venture capital funding or whatnot, right? What does that look like, right? And so there's a lot of guidance there um, in terms of how do you go from, you know, like I was saying before, from the lab to the patient and all that that goes into that commercialization process, right? And so um, that's that's number two. Number three is, you know, whenever, whenever um, you know, philanthropists like, um, like Lida Hill, which we're so thankful for her generosity, um, you know, make a gift as such, 
you know, it's always interesting to see what other um, philanthropic support will will follow. And so, you know, from a funding perspective, you know, it, it positions your idea or your um, uh, 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 business, I should say, for, um, you know, other funding um, that, you know, either the offices of development or, or, or others, right, would be interested in tagging along on right on, on, onto this award and so you know that i believe is another resource uh, potential resource down the road and then also you know from a um uh, uh, from a faculty perspective, you know, we do have the big idea competition every year um, and we have research track awards. And so, you know, that's the big showcase for entrepreneurship um, here at UT Dallas, where uh, we really get to celebrate those ideas and those individuals that have taken um, their idea and have gotten it to a point where um, it's doing great things and great progress. And so that's also a great resource to be um, to keep on your on, on the horizon. You know, just a, a few anecdotes, you know, we've had a number of faculty members who have pitched their idea at the big idea competition or or, um, you know, have been awarded um, uh, funding from the big idea competition from the research innovation track awards. And, um, you know, that's led to other individuals either in the audience or or donors becoming investors, right? So we've actually had that happen as a result of just their participation. And so, you know, that's something that um, is a great resource to showcase the idea, to spread the word amongst a, a community that can be supportive to your idea um, at UT Dallas. So. Thank you. And so mm -hmm. speaking of, of Shark Tank and pitch decks, something that is unique about this uh, seed program opportunity is, um, uh, people applying or those, those teams applying will have to do a presentation, a pitch deck presentation, which is which is unique um, in addition to, to submitting their written proposal. Um, so in, in conclusion, we have this, it, it's $120,000 one year, um, uh, translational research expected to be commercialized as part of the return on investment for the funding. Um, there will there are resources available to help with the commercialization pro, uh, process, and um, with that, I want to thank our panel. And uh, Aretha, are there any questions in the chat? I'll turn it back over to you. Yes, ma'am. There are a few questions from the chat. The first one is, how exactly are applications reviewed? Dr. Akers, do you want to take that, or I can I can answer that? Uh, I'll let you answer that. Thank you. Sure. So the way, so I mentioned earlier that there will be a um, presentation. So there's going to be a panel of um, uh, people from UT South or a committee from UT Southwestern, UT Dallas, and from Lida Hill that will judge the the um, pitch deck um, presentation. And I believe it's 10 minutes, a 10 minute pitch deck, six slides with uh, questions and answers uh, following. And then there, that will be part of, of how um, the decision is made on who would get the funding. Awesome, thank you for that answer. And the next question is, is this only for a new team without previous collaboration record? Dr. Akers? No, this, is, this can be for established teams. It's not limited. Uh, there is one uh, comment about the review process that it will be taken into account if this is a new collaboration or not, uh, but it is not limited to those that are brand new collaborations. Excellent, thank you, Dr. Akers. And our last question is, when are proposals due and where can we apply? So the, proposal, the proposals are due on April 30th. And if you go to the uh, research office, of, um, I think it's research at UT Dallas, um, if you go to the research page, click on the research um, tab. Oh, there we go. Is that is that it right there? <laughs> click on the research tab at the UT Dallas Office of Research. And um, on that tab, if you go under research, under researcher, there is another tab that says internal funding. And Lida Hill pops up under uh, internal funding. And it has all of the requirements for the request for proposal, as well as what the expectations are, should you receive funding. So the deliverables, as well as the, the um, what's required for the request for proposal. Awesome, thank you for that. And I did pop that website, uh, Dr. Delk, into the chat for the Lida Hill Biomedical Engineer Fund overview. I popped that into the chat. Thank you. 
All right, there are no more questions from the audience at this time. Would anyone like to add anything further before we exit? Awesome. Well, a sincere thank you to Dr. Delt and all of today's presenters. We appreciate you taking your time to share your expertise today. And audience, we definitely thank you for joining us as well. Stay abreast of upcoming Office of Research and Innovation programs by following us on social media and subscribing to our newsletter. Please join us tomorrow, March 28th at 12 p.m. as we present our first, our next course in the RCR Professional Series Training, Research Ethics. This information and a polite request to complete a brief survey about today's program can be found in the chat. Thank you guys very much for joining us today.